This will be a quick video into adult development and aging. Adolescence uh, historical context emerged around the 1950s and 60s due to child labor laws and mandatory public education. There were also protests against the adult authority in the form of Vietnam War protests, contraception, sexual revolution, etc., etc. Education uh, also had a role to play in well, creating secondary schools which segregated childhood from adulthood and forced peers to, uh, to come into contact with each other. Puberty is influenced by hormones which change for about two to four years. Uh, there's also cultural variation in timing, nutrition, the onset of puberty. An example of that is menarche, which occurs in women whereby they have their first period uh, as a result of oestrogen being produced. This usually occurs around either around 9 to 17 years old. Spermash, on the other hand, occurs in boys uh, where testosterone is produced and they usually have their first ejaculation or nocturnal emissions. This occurs around 9 to 17 years. Timing of uh, menarche or spermarch is affected by social and psychological health, genes, nutrition, maturity, as well as social or cultural ideals. Other things to consider also are psychological development during uh, adolescence, such as like cognitive critical thinking, as well as emotional volatility or emotional vulnerability. Social development also occurs whereby there's a focus on peers compared to parents, schooling and sexual relationships or romantic partnerships. During uh, adolescence, as well as childhood prior, pruning occurs whereby certain synapses are cut off or discontinued in order to become more efficient. This continues until late 20s and the brain is faster or more efficient and it's influenced by hormones, social pressure, identity development and so on. Pruning can affect risky or impulsive behavior as there is minimal consideration of negative consequences since the brain is still developing as in mainly in the prefrontal region cortex. Cognitive capacities According to Piaget, adolescents, they reach the formal operations and they are endowed with hypothetical deductive reasoning in which they can hold alternatives constant to test something, metacognition, which is reflective functioning, emotional development, as stated prior, whereby they have more complex emotions like shame, embarrassment, guilt, anxiety, this gives rise to internalizing disorders like depression, anorexia, bulimia, suicide, etc. There are also externalizing disorders like violence, substance abuse, delinquency around this time. Identity versus alienation. This is according to Erickson's model uh, around adolescence, whereby role confusion occurs in which an individual feels confused if they are unable to form their identity and also identity formation whereby they question, explore abstract principles that take a long time to develop and it's very complex. Novice phase occurs around 17 to 33 years whereby an individual builds their stable life structure. They try to fulfill their dreams, find a mentor, occupation, and, and initiate an intimate relationship. This was found by Levison in 1978. The inner self has agency, self-reflection, values, beliefs. On the other hand, there's the public self, which is role, expectation of others. Autonomy, as stated prior, is defined as being the independent psychological status whereby individuals or people recognize similarity and differences from their parents and they feel a connection and understanding towards them but are also still independent. Gender identity consolidation. Gender identity or masculine or feminine traits are socialized and 
develop expectations, sexual orientation and preferences, and these influence development in general. Subjective sense of adulthood was found by Annette in the year 2000, who accepted responsibility, independent decisions, financial self-sufficiency, and parenthood. Early adulthood, intimacy versus isolation, which is the next Erickson's uh, stage of development. Intimacy is defined as the ability to experience open, supportive, tender relationships with another without fear of losing one's own identity. The ego strength developed here is love or mutuality of devotion. Middle adulthood has the stage of generativity versus self-absorption. Generativity is the biological drive to reproduce or a cultural expectation, philosophical urge for symbolic immortality, or to fulfill a productive niche in society. In a way, generativity could be like contributing to society, or it could be creating offspring that will outlive you, or it could be creating works of art, writing books, sharing ideas that outlive you, that leave your mark on the world in a way. The ego strength developed here is care, whereby the individual generates love and necessity, well, needs love and necessity. Older adulthood, according to Erickson, must strive between the crisis of ego interactivity versus despair. Ego strength here is wisdom, which is the process of reviewing one's own life, major regrets, detached from life's overall concern, and also come to grips with death. Erickson also proposed a ninth stage to his life development stages called geotranscendence, which is a broad perspective on life and the universe to become spiritually at one, but that may also be due to decreased social interaction. Identity development occurs in the early 20s and needs both identity and intimacy. Critical stages of adult ego development include intimacy, career consolidation, generativity, keeper of meaning, meaning of family stories. So in order to develop oneself, they must be able to, well obviously they need a career to live, as in to make a living. They also have to have relationships with other people, develop intimacy, attachment, connection, and they also need something to outlive them, to reproduce or continue on. Erickson's life cycle model is insistent on the unfolding of development in stages that are driven by the internal ego and its, well, crises or conflicts that come about from, from the ego. Another final key term to recognize is New Garden or the timing of events. It can classify events as being normative or on-time life events or non-normative, not normal uh, events during, or events that are unique during one's lifetime. And yeah, we basically looked at adult development and aging. Thanks for watching.